Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode 44. Hey, if you haven't yet, go and get the essential preparation tips for travel photography at the bottom of every page on understandphotography.com. Joe Fitzpatrick put a lot of work into to putting together a simple document with really helpful tips for getting ready for your travel photography. So that, if you scroll down to the bottom of every single page on our website, understandphotography.com, you can get that. It's free. Just all you got to do is download it. So um, also remember that this, hopefully you're watching it live on our Facebook page, but we also put it on YouTube and then also uh, it's a podcast on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it if you like this show, please review us. Uh, the best place to review us would be either on iTunes or on YouTube. Really, really helps us to get more viewers. Thank you so much for that. Our Photoshop class is still on pre-orders. It goes live on July 15th and also the price goes up on July 15th. So if you're interested in our Photoshop online class, it's a ridiculously low price. I'm not even going to say it on the internet because this is going to be on the internet for a long time. So go on understandphotography.com. Just click on store. That's the easiest, fastest way to get to it. And you'll see the class there. It is a series of short little videos, very short little videos. So you're going to watch a video, learn a little bit, kind of follow me as I'm teaching. You can rewind it if you want to and you're going to learn a little tiny bit at a time. So the videos, I think the longest one is 11 minutes because the clone tool is a little more complicated to, to learn. But, so that one's a little longer, but everything else is really short, little short videos. Everyone loves that format we're learning because we also have our Lightroom class like that, which is on sale, available right now. And we have a Photoshop Elements class on pre-order. That's going to be available August 1st. The Lightroom course has been out for since uh, July 1st, and we've gotten quite a few reviews. I'm going to read this one from Katie Kuczynski. She said, I think this course is amazing. I can't believe how much I have learned. Joe is very detailed, which is great. I love that the lessons are short because I know I'm going to be going back many times to watch specific videos. I honestly don't have specific su suggestions as they are all great. Excellent, excellent. So check out our Lightroom class as well while you're there. Everything's on understandphotography.com. All the products are in the store, but, but look around. We've got hundreds of great articles, and you know our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical. So all that being said, I know that you're, you've tuned in here today because you want to see our guest. My guest today is nature and fine art photographer Sarah Lopez of Through the Lens Gallery out in Sanibel. Island. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you. It's Thank nice you for to coming. Be here. Thank you. On the long drive, right? Oh yes, very long too, drive. Hour and a half. Uh, it was more like 45 minutes, stretching it to an hour because of traffic. That's fast. Yes. Well, no. <laughs> it was going to be less than that, so we didn't plan for it correctly. But you're here. Yes, you're we calm. Are. Yes. On live show. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> so now, now you, how did you get into photography? Have you been doing it a long time? or? When I was about 13 years old, my father had an SLR camera, and he gave it to me, and he says, see what you can do with this. Those were his instructions. I said, okay, and I started taking pictures. My grandfather on my mother's side said, go out and take photographs of clouds. I said, clouds? And he goes, if you can take good photographs of clouds, you have an eye for photography, and you should do okay. Wow. So I went out, took some pictures, probably on automatic, <laughs> because yeah, well, you were I didn't 13. know anything. <laughs> yes. And I had him developed, and he says, yes, you do. You have an eye for photography, so see what you can do. And then one thing just led to another and another. Then I had children. Of course, you must take pictures of your kids. <laughs> so all kinds of portraits with ice cream trailing from the ice cream to the mouth. and and. That. So you've never stopped since you were 13? I have not stopped. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, now, when did you turn pro, basically? Uh, well, I think that was with 
Dick, with my partner in life and crime and everything, Dick Fortune. Uh, he and I realized that we both had the same likes and dislikes. And we came to Sanibel on a romantic weekend. Uh -huh. And then we saw how wonderful Sanibel was and all the birds and the wildlife. And we just fell in love with Sanibel. Matter of fact, bought property and we're now building our home there. And uh, we just decided that that's what we wanted to do. So where did you come from? Miami. Oh, so you met in Miami. Yes, we did. And you were doing different types of careers. Yes, totally And then you different. said, we're going to open a gallery on San Sanibel. We're going to just go for our dream. Is that we basically? We don't have a gallery yet. We're going to open one oh. once we move there, not when we get the house. Right oh. now, our gallery is online. OK. And everything that we do mostly is online. Um, but once we move, we ha we're looking at different areas of Sanibel to see what we're going to do. I would imagine that would be a good location for an art gallery. You would think, but there's so many of them already. Oh, yeah. And yeah. today, everybody thinks they're a photographer. This is true. Your everybody work. thinks that even with their iPhones, they can take the best picture in the world. Yeah, so. <laughs> this is true. So now, did you meet through photography? No. No? No, we actually met through volleyball. Ah, that's so funny. <laughs> yes. My kids were in school, and uh, the teachers started an after-school adult volleyball um, program. And he knew one of the teachers there, and he got invited through her. And the teachers invited me as a parent, and the rest is history. The rest is history. Ah, yeah. that's awesome. I so, love that. Yeah. So now, how do you guys work together? Do you go out and shoot together, or do you do your own thing? No, or? we're one of those strange folks who like to be together. <laughs> we do go out and shoot together. And, and you, you primarily shoot wildlife? Or? Primarily. We've done weddings. We really don't like them. But you have friends, you have family, and they're all saying, oh, no, you got to photograph our wedding. They don't or, understand that there's different skill sets. Totally. For Thankfully, their weddings were outside in nature, so that helped. Ah, <laughs> so that's funny. Beach weddings, things like that. What so. about landscapes? Landscapes um, depends on where we are. Like when we went to Alaska, we took a lot of landscapes. Oh, yeah. We prefer... Wildlife. Wildlife. Yeah, well, it it's shows your work is amazing. Thank you. You have to be very patient, I think, to. Extremely to, so. And that's something, that's why you don't see a lot of wildlife out of me. <laughs> Patience is not one of my virtues. <laughs> this morning we were shooting um, a reddish egret nest. Oh, they're so cute. They're the ones that do that cool little dance, right? Yes, that's my favorite to shoot is the reddish egret. Now, this is the first time, as far as we know, that there's been a nest in Sanibel that at least was wow. visible. Wow. And it's a reddish egret morph, which means it's a white chick, and it will be white for the rest of its life. So it's a, it's just a, it's a it's morph. A fluke. It's a not morph? an albino, it's a morph. Wow. Yeah. And it's so it's going to still beautiful. do the cute little dance, it's just going to be white. White. Wow. So we got there at 6 30 this morning. Light came up beautifully, baby, baby, the chick was out, and the parents came to feed it, and we got the feeding, and everything's wonderful, and this man comes around, because then the baby went into its nest and says, how long are you going to be here? And I go, <laughs> well, we're hoping there's going to be another feeding, and he goes, by when? And I go, maybe before 10 o'clock, and he goes, it's 7 o'clock in the morning, you're going to stay out here all this time waiting? I say, yeah. Wow. If we get lucky, maybe the chick will come out, do a little flapping, do something that we can take. And sure enough, he did. But that's what it takes to be so a now wildlife what do you, photographer. What do you do while you're out there? We photograph I've other had, birds. I've never had the patience to <laughs> go out. And, you know, I've had so many bird photographers on this show, and they're like, come on, I'll take you out. I'm like, OK, I have to get up before dawn. Yes. And then I have to just do a lot of sitting around. But yeah. when you're sitting around, you're actually just, you're still photographing. Oh, yes. You're photographing yes. other birds. There were some snowy egrets there that uh, were fighting, which is always interesting because they become absolutely beautiful. Their feathers flare oh, yes. up. And 
just gorgeous and egrets and other things and now where do you go do you have a favorite spot is there a rookery on Sanibel there's or? a couple of, there's a lots of places in Sanibel which is why it, it really is a paradise for bird photography um, there's Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge there's the pier where the lighthouse is which close to there it happens to be where that this nest is oh, okay um, there's the Bailey track there's the beaches Bowman's Beach um, how do you find out all this like say I I'm new to Sanibel and I, I'm a bird photographer how would I find out where the good spots were one of the best places is the Audubon Society ah. they have a very strong Audubon Society in Sanibel go on their website and say you know where can I look for birds? Of course, they're immediate, immediately going to say Ding Darling. That's, right, of course. And it's really an excellent place, but you have to know, you have to be aware, you have to do your research. When is low tide? Low tide is the best time to go to Ding Darling. Okay. If you want to photograph the roseates, the spoonbills, it has to be early in the morning because okay. that's when they're there and they preen, they get ready, and then they take off oh. to their feeding areas. So being a nature photographer, you have to be patient. You have to learn how to do research because yeah. you've got to find out where everything is. Right. And you have to respect nature. Yeah, yeah. So. I, know, um, I know that there are some struggles sometimes with the Audubon Society, for mm -hmm. instance, with photographers because mm -hmm. they're not respecting nature as you put it yeah yeah so I agree you have to you have to be respectful that's for sure that's one of our pet peeves whenever we do um, presentations and we did one for the Audubon Society in Sanibel there were over 300 people there Wow so um, when we do them we we have a little thing that says you know a fed animal is a dead animal so please do not feed wildlife that's just it's really asking for trouble. Yeah. And then the other thing is, please be respectful, not just of wildlife, but of your fellow photographers. Yes. Everybody wants to take the shot, you know? So if you need to step away for a few minutes, so let somebody else go in so they can take the shot, step away. Get yours, but then step right. away. Let somebody else have, if there's only one area. Right. Yeah, so. that's, that's nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know on Facebook, they always have all these idiots that they, you know, film because there was one guy who there was I don't know where it was somewhere like in it was in West Florida but north of here somewhere and uh, he was on they were all on the boardwalk and he got off the, off the boardwalk with his tripod to photograph this alligator but she had babies <gasps> so she was like coming up like trying to scare him off and first he ran off but then of course he left his stuff there and so then he's back he gets back in there with his iPhone and everybody's yelling at him like you idiot get out of there you know and the I mean There's what an idiot <laughs> what an idiot you yes. know yes. oh my gosh and, you know for, but they uh, should get a ticket or something for that oh, kind of behavior I mean they, somebody took a video of it we know who this guy is yes, they should but probably nothing happened to him and he didn't get eaten by the alligator although she threatened him mm. anyway what were you gonna say oh I was gonna say I did um, I was a ranger for uh, the Everglades for a summer I oh. subbed for somebody else who was out with a broken leg and um, the funniest thing was I was there and all these tourists they must have come from Orlando from Disney World because they were trying to put their babies on the alligators to have a picture taken. <gasps> and I said, Oh my God. I would have to go and say, No, 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 no Disney, no. Live, real, no. And it was crazy. And I thought, Oh people my. People must be. God. There's well, they say all in, kinds in, this in world. Yellowstone, yeah. I guess tourists get killed all the time. Trying to take pictures with bison. Yeah, and it's like, what is wrong with these crazy people? I don't get it. Too much Disney, I think. They yeah. think everything is hunky-dory and sweet and cute and crazy. And it's not. I know, jeez. <laughs> ah. All right, so back to you and Dick. So is your style very similar? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yes and no. Okay. Uh, Dick is more technical. He's more into all the rules and regulations, the um, 
Rule of thirds. Rules of thirds. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes I can, you I'm reading your sign language. Yes. <laughs> Rule of thirds and the um, oh gosh, sometimes you know you get to an age and this happens. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, he's more into that. I'm more into the feel, into the what is it telling me, uh -huh. and um, it works out great. There was a gentleman who. Um, does research with dolphins, mm -hmm. and his organization is called Speak Dolphin. Okay. He was looking for a grant, and he came to us and says, your pictures show emotion, oh. and I need to show emotion so I can get this grant. Is there any way I could use some of your pictures? The work he's doing is unbelievable. He's actually communicating with dolphins. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And, um, he owes us a trip down to Mexico with him where he does a lot of his research. He says, anytime wow. you're ready, just come so you can swim with them and see how we communicate with them. And oh my gosh, that sounds so, so exciting. It, it is. It's Timing hasn't been there, but hopefully one yeah, day. Yeah, well, you're building yeah. a house. Yes. <laughs> you're all caught up in building a house, right? Yes, we are. Jeez, that's a lot of work. So when you're together out shooting, do you... Do you see things differently, do you think? Or do you help each other? Do you say, oh, look, get this shot, or oh, I think you should get down lower to get the shot? Do you Both. do things all, Both. all of the above? All of the above. Yeah. We, we do compete a lot, I've oh. got to tell you. We compete a lot. And, uh, but even though we compete, we help each other. So I'll say, you know, that's not the right lighting. Why don't you move over here? And sometimes he'll look at me and say, look at your background. Oh. And then I'll say, oh, yeah, maybe the lighting's not as great, but the background <laughs> sure is better over there. And the same or the opposite, you know, and we'll, we will help each other. But at the end of the day, it's who got the best shot. Ah. <laughs> so, so that keeps us really thriving while, when we're out there. So Now, how often do you go out and shoot? We go out and shoot as often as we can. And usually ah. it's every weekend for sure. Um, during the week it gets a little tougher because him and uh, Dick and his brother do own a business that they've had for 50 years. So it's a he's flooring still, business. He's still working. Yes, but he's going to retire now hopefully soon or so he promised. Uh -huh. I'm putting him on the spot. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, when he does then uh, hopefully the house will be done by then and that's when uh, we're going to do a lot more, a lot more traveling. Yeah, it's yeah. so fun to travel, especially, mm -hmm. you know what, it's, I think travel is more fun when you're a photographer. Absolutely. And I don't always, sometimes I travel, I don't even take my picture, I'll just, I mean, take my camera, I'll just take my cell phone. But most of the time, it gives you a purpose, I think, mm -hmm. while you're, you know, it's one thing just to see something, but to capture, to capture. it and to make it look really cool it's something else you oh, know absolutely so absolutely. Yeah. I don't know that's awesome but you go every weekend that's awesome that's a discipline is it a discipline or is it just something that you just like were it's so excited passion. to go okay it's so passion. it's your passion it's it not a discipline passion. no and you it's like to get up early or you just no, get up early no, because no, no, no. no you don't like it <laughs> <laughs> you do it because that's when the light that's is there when the light is there today oh. matter of fact we wanted to get there before the sun rose and we actually had another photographer friend of ours that said, Liz, can you call us at 6 just to make sure we got up? Oh. And sure enough, she called and I said, yeah, we're up, we're up. And she goes, okay, I'll see you there. <laughs> so, wow. Now, but, how many uh, people were out there? Is this, is there just the th three, three of, of us, you. Dick and myself and Liz. Is there a good photography community in, on Santa Bell? Yes, that there is. There's a wonderful community in Sanibel, and most of them belong to the um, Fort Myers Camera Club. Okay. Yeah. Because that's how we found you. You yes. spoke there last year, mm -hmm. I think. We've, we've judged there. Oh, okay. And this past one was the judging, and we've also given a presentation there before. So. Yeah, Joe was very impressed with oh, you guys. Thank you. He's like, you got to get these people on your show, <laughs> and hopefully we'll get your husband on here. Hopefully, because someday. he's really... He's really something, and you really <laughs> should hear him, really, yeah. Now, you have a passion for conservation and wildlife protection. So yes. how, tell me about that. What do, you, what do you do for that? We volunteer okay. and give our work to a lot of organizations. 
for various reasons to raise money, I like the to dolphin raise guy. awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, when the spill happened in the Gulf, the oil spill. Oh, when was that? Nineties, uh, I remember. Right, right? Was uh, it in the nineties or was it? Hasn't been that long. Hasn't it's been that been long. About maybe seven years ago. It's only or been so. seven years. I think so, or either that, or I'm time just going by so That's fast. Right. Yeah, it's about right. Wow, it seems like it was a million years ago yeah. to me. <laughs> and um, we were approached by um, the National Wildlife Fed Federation and they said, we want a picture that kind of symbolizes wildlife in that kind of environment. We just happened to have one of an otter in this, what looked like oily water, even though it wasn't. It was just that the water in Sanibel in the ponds is not as blue and clear as it should be. And uh, we gave him the picture and it went on all of the trays in airplanes. Oh, Any wow. flight coming out of Southwest Florida, uh, New Orleans, Mississippi, Louisiana, any of the Gulf area, that picture was there asking wow. for a donation to help clean up the uh, oil spills, et cetera. So, wow. So we do what we can. Um, we use our photography as and a means to give back. How did so. they know about you? Um, you donated through, before. Through somebody who knew us who we had done work for before, like Florida Wildlife Federation. So it, it, everything is kind of interconnected and people find out about you and then they So if, if, if that was my passion, how would I get started? Is that, a, I mean, I, you're not the first person who said that they like to donate their photography for causes, mm -hmm. for conservation causes mostly. Yes. So what do you do? Would you, you just call somebody up and say, you call up the Florida Wildlife Foundation, is that what it's called? You can do that, or a lot of people send in for the contest that they have, and oh, then they, they get contests. approached. contests, oh, okay. Yes. And that's one thing that we do recommend people do. Um, join every contest. Don't think you're gonna win. And I'll tell you why I haven't been a judge in many contests. Okay. You're always at the um, whatever it is that I'm thinking of at the moment, whatever it is I'm involved in at the moment, that's going to be what I'm going to find in a picture. Okay. We had just finished reading uh, Jane Goodall on the apes in Africa. Okay. We judged a contest, the international contest in Miami. One person had a beautiful portrait of a silverback gorilla. Uh-huh. Oh my God. We went psh, directly to it. Because that's what you were just fresh in your mind. Oh my goodness, that's funny. I never would have thought of that because I judge a lot of photography competitions too. But Technically it was perfect, yes. Oh. Everything was great, but so were so many other pictures. But because that was fresh in your That was fresh in our mind. That was what we were involved with. There were other animals, birds, everything. There were scenics. Yeah. They were beautiful, but guess what one first ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, and that's, that's interesting to that's me. That's the way it is. Um, I know that you try not to let it influence you, but it's what we found so perfect. It was like, look at his eyes, there's emotion there, there's feeling. It, it just became probably more than it was because we had just gone through yeah. that. Maybe not though, maybe it really was. Because especially for us who live here in Southwest Florida or South Florida in general, we get we see a lot of bird pictures, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So a gorilla would be you, a unique, unique thing in yeah. a photo competition here. Mm -hmm. So maybe was, that was part of it too. Yes, it could be. So and, uh, they were all technically perfect. Everybody who was in that contest was they did a good job. Well, excellent. And um, I did have somebody come up over to me afterwards and says, "Do you see that picture?" And I go, "Oh yes, that's a beautiful picture." And she goes, "Well, what didn't you like about it?" I said, "Absolutely nothing." I said, "Matter of fact." If I was buying it for me, I probably would have bought that picture and not the gorilla. <laughs> she goes, why? And I go, because it would have looked better in my wall. Yeah. I said, but there was just something about that gorilla that spoke to me at the moment. Yeah. You know? So there's a difference between art 
between why am I getting this? Am I getting this to hang on my wall? Or am I getting this because it's something I believe in, I feel strongly about? There's yeah. And that can make or break a sale or... This is so true. Mm -hmm. This is so true because a, 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 what in the, peop, the professional photographers of America, they say what's salonable is not always sellable. So this, what they mean is what wins in competition mm -hmm. usually is not going to sell. No. Who wants an osprey with a fish? hanging, bleeding from its talons, <laughs> right, <laughs> on their wall. There's a At bloody least, fish on my wall. Yeah, not I, you know, <laughs> but, oh my God, what a shot that they were there, that they captured that. Yes, it will win a contest, but yeah. how many people, except m maybe men, who would yeah. want that on their wall, you know? Yeah, good. the guys who put their heads on the walls, the exactly. same thing. I'll put some bloody fish up there, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, how did you get into judging? Um, a friend of ours needed somebody and said, would you please, I love your work and whatever, and I said, wow, but judging is so different than just photographing. Yeah. So thank God for the internet nowadays, because I immediately went into the internet, got some pointers about what you should be looking for, et cetera, et cetera. And that's basically what we photograph. You know, how do you do this? How do you right. do that? Do you use the thirds? Are your horizons straight? Are they in the thirds and not stuck in the middle? That kind of thing. Right, right. So um, when we judge, that's what we looked for. And um, we provide a feedback. People love that. Because I know we, we judge, and, and that's what they say, we need feedback because most judges just give you a just, score. Yes, that's it. And then they left. But then you ha it's a skill because you have to be kind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard yes. to say the right thing, yes. you know. Sometimes it's, it's happened. But you try to at least give, start out with a positive. I love the colors in your picture. Uh -huh. You could have done a little better maybe with your background. It's your subject doesn't pop, blah, 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 and then end up once again with something nice about the picture. Yeah, if you can. sandwich it. Yeah, sandwich <laughs> it sandwich in, the so criticism. It's good, <laughs> not so good, <laughs> and it's yeah, great. Yeah, that's again, good. So. I like that. I so like that's that. that's basically what we do. Dick's much better at it than I am. So. Now, do you judge a lot? Do you go around to the different... Well, the, not a lot. No. There's just certain Sometimes. organizations that learned of us and decided that any time they have their final judges we're the ones in there so oh, that's awesome yeah so we enjoy it we enjoy especially giving the feedback sometimes like you say if it's something bad but most of these organizations we go to people are amazing photographers <laughs> nowadays I know <laughs> it's are. funny because I know when I first started judging and I I had a judge up at um, a retirement community they had a you know it's a big community in Fort Myers and they have a camera Show club point. And, uh, <laughs> oh man, they had some. Our friend is. They had there some soon. tough pictures mm -hmm. to. It's like, they, you know, like some of the categories, they were all really bad and it was hard to, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. most of the time, the camera clubs, oh my gosh, people are amazing. 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 Mm -hmm. So, now you also have images from the zoo, right? Yes. yes. Now, do you have any? Now, why? First of all, why the zoos? I know. People say, you know, you're into conservation and everything, but you go to zoos. I go, yes, we do. Um, unfortunately, in our belief, in ours, we don't push that on anybody else, but we do believe that the world is changing so rapidly mm -hmm. that there will be animals that will become extinct. And the zoo is one of those places that may be able to preserve those animals. And I think that's the way zoos are going now. Mm -hmm. Zoos are changing from how totally. they used to be. And I don't totally. know if you watched, I had a, uh, John Brady on here a couple of weeks ago. No, he, and he's the one who basically saved uh, Everglades Wonder Gardens. And oh. it was a zoo when it started off, kind of like a little zoo. Oh, and he's we like, went that's there. not. It's, it's fantastic, yeah. though. Yeah. Oh, you've been to it yes, recently? Get, no, yeah. no, about a year ago. Well, that's since he. Since took he it took over. it over, yes, basically, yes. and he, he had just started. We talked to him. He he's a started. nice guy, yes. but yeah, Beautiful he was he was just he talking about. Too. Oh, he's amazing, mm -hmm. but he was talking about how the the attitude is changing 
Yeah. You know, and so of course people don't want to see big animals in small cages anymore. But zoos are, you know, they're taking in the, you know, the animals that have been domesticated that shouldn't have been, but they can't make it out in the wild no, anymore, they can't. or no. the injured animals. Mm -hmm. So they they're serving a, a a higher purpose now than maybe they Correct. did in the beginning. Yep. So, and, and of that's course, why we like it. And of course, they're so nice nowadays. They're not just looking at animals in small cages. They're in their natural, natural environments environment. usually. Yes. So now, where do you go? Well. Miami Zoo. Miami Zoo is amazing. It is. It's an unbelievable place. Um, Palm Beach Zoo. It's oh, a much smaller zoo, but it is wonderful. It also has them in their natural environment and um, has a nice canopy. So even if it's hot, it's a little uh, cooler. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing I remember about Miami Zoo. I was just hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and then there's um, Flamingo Gardens. Flamingo okay. Gardens is one of those places that takes in injured animals. Okay. And if they can, they will treat them and try to release them back. But if they can't, then they, they keep them. They can stay. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they just got a bear that lived for 13 years in a, in a closet. That's how big. He couldn't lay down. Oh, my God. And... Um, you should see him now. He has his own pond where he goes swimming. Aww. He has his own cave. So he was somebody's pet? He was, I never got the full story oh, if it okay. was a pet or it was some kind of entertainment and then they had no use for him anymore and then they put him in this oh, room. Oh, how and awful. Oh, so people it was can really be terrible. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine how people can. So what about photographing in a zoo? What's what's different about photographing in a zoo other than, what, other than you don't have to go miles and miles to find the animals? <laughs> <laughs> that is one good thing about them. Um, the difference, I think, is, and what you should do when you go to a zoo, do not ride one of those carts okay. or one of those bicycle things, unless if it's just to get from one to the other. But you have to spend time at each Yes, exhibit because the animal may just be sitting there looking around and you're saying, oh, boring, and you move on. Just as you moved on, something happened and that animal went crazy and did something. Um, we that patience, there's that patience there's again. Man, I got to learn how to do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> we were at Miami Zoo and they had chimps. Okay. And uh, they thought they had the ladies fixed but they didn't and they got pregnant and had more oh chimps. Oh my god, that's yes. funny. So um, these little chimps, you've never seen anything like this in your life. First of all, they're extremely sexual animals. Oh. From uh -huh. little oh. babies <laughs> on. And we have this picture of these two little chimps, like French kissing, and oh we call god. it CPR. Ah. Chimps playing round, you know? <laughs> So, but that's the funny thing. If you don't spend the time, because they were all just sitting around and everybody kept going and leaving and we just waited and waited. And then all of a sudden they just started playing and they started this whole sexual thing going on. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope there's no kids around or the parents take them away from here because they are extremely sexual animals. So are the big cats at the Naples Zoo. That's, oh. where, that's where my son got his sex ed. <laughs> He's like at the fence going, what are they doing? <laughs> well, that's always nice when you have to explain something to your kids. When you're not ready. <laughs> yeah. Mine got it with the movie um, Exodus. No, not Exodus. It, um, Camelot. Okay. It was a dream scene. Uh -huh. And this man and this woman. And the, I was always told answer as little as possible let them ask you more if they need more clarification okay so i said what are they doing i said well that's like a dream he goes i know but what are they doing in the dream <laughs> <laughs> i said well if you see probably the next scene she's going to be pregnant and she's going to have a baby and sure enough there came the baby and ah! goes, wow <laughs> I said, oh boy. <laughs> I know. You know, nobody can prepare you for parenthood. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so now when you go to the zoos, you bring your tripod and you lug all that heavy equipment around? We lug it around. When we go to the Everglades, we lug that heavy equipment around. We both have 600s. 
and the tripods and the camera. Do you have a cart? No. You got to get a cart. <laughs> we love Especially it at the zoo, man. <laughs> I have a cart and it's it's a beach cart, but it <laughs> folds up. So I had I have a minivan now, but I had a car that it folded up and fit in the car, and it's amazing. And I take it out because we go to the zoo or someplace like mm -hmm. that. And of course, at the zoo, you can cart you it around. No big it deal. Around, yeah. Oh my God, it's so nice. Yeah. But when you're hiking in the Everglades, you can't take no. it. You got to have a good backpack with good support straps. Is what I. Absolutely. That's my thing, which I still don't have. I have one. I shouldn't say that. I I don't have a dry bag with good support straps because now I've graduated to hiking into the water. <laughs> so you need a you need a dry bag. Yes. And my dry bag is, is it hurts okay. after a while, you know. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A lot of times people say, how did you do that? Isn't that heavy? And I go, here. And I lift it up for them and they go, oh. you get used to it. Like everything in life, you get yeah. used to it. And you, you, if you're motivated and you know that you, I mean, a good tripod is more important than, oh. I mean, that's where you, the lenses and the tripods is where you need to put your money in. Absolutely. Because if your tripod's going to sink, you're going to be disappointed, and you just got to yeah. have that good tripod, and it's got to be sturdy enough to hold your big 600 millimeter lens, mm -hmm. which I can't even imagine. That must be really heavy. It is. It's <laughs> really heavy. Now, the new one that just came out, it's not heavy, but it's also a lot of money. And, you know, there's no excuse for us to say, oh, yes, let's. Maybe as we get a little older, maybe we can say, okay, yes, we'll, <laughs> we'll look into that. <laughs> but right now we can still do it, so. Yeah, yeah. So now you also have some beautiful shots of flowers and botanicals in we general. We love botanicals. We go to Selby Gardens. We go to um, Fairchild's Tropical Gardens down okay. in Miami. We love, love bot botanicals. Um, now what kind of equipment do you use for? We use a macro lens. What's your macro lens? Uh, we have the 180. We also have the 100. Okay. The, Which one uh, do you like better? The Canon 180 has beautiful, beautiful bouquet. Okay. But the 100 is IS, image stabilizer. Oh. So if there's a flower somewhere where you can't just have it on a tripod or whatever, you can get it off the tripod, you can get closer to it, and you can get that, that shot. Oh. So. Okay. Every lens has its pluses and minuses. Uh, yeah, know? I know. And then you need them all. Mm -hmm. The 100 is so light, the 180 is heavy. Yeah. And again, but you don't have to hike as far usually for fl florals, oh, that's right? that's the nice thing. Well, we, we walk the whole park. Yeah. We look for every flower that there could be out there, every insect, because we also like the bees and the insects. and. That's just what we do. You gotta get the card. I'm telling you, you're gonna thank me. <laughs> yes, I think we'll so. put actually we'll put the link to the card in yes, the show notes. Excellent. <laughs> now, so how do you sell? You said you have an online gallery now. Yes. Is it on your website or uh, is it through Fine Art America or, or on all our of website, the above? We'll or? get an we'll get an email. Say, hi, I really love this picture. How much would it be, or whatever? And then we negotiate with them, and how do you want it? I heard somebody on one of your shows, matter of fact, uh, maybe the, your last show, who said, "I hate canvas." <laughs> oh yeah, I was so surprised with that. I, I love know. I love canvas, but I love <laughs> canvas, you know? yeah. So um, and yes, the the um, the new things coming out now that. Colors are so vibrant. They really are. Oh it's my incredible. Gosh. But there's just something about a canvas. I love canvas. Yeah. I think it's a classic. Y yes, and exactly. It, but it's still, if you, especially if you get like a gallery wrap with no frame, it's got and that still modern what most look. most people you know? keep asking for. And gallery they're easy to hang. Wrap. They're easy to hang. They're mm -hmm. so lightweight. I love that. Yes. So, okay, so you don't even have like here, this is for sale for this not much this, money. That, not you just point. have the pictures up there, and, and, word, of and word of mouth. Wow, you guys yeah. must be. A, how do how how are you so popular? I don't know. Inquiring <laughs> minds want to know. I don't know because sometimes. I mean, other people work so hard at the marketing, and it sounds like you're just sort of like, well, everybody just loves us. No, <laughs> no but this is 
Irish, and I, I keep telling him he's got that Irish luck. He really does. He's unbelievable. Um, we did a whole house. These folks bought a house that they renovated, uh -huh. got in touch with us through their contractor, because we knew the contractor's wife, said, I want them all in black and white. I have this cupola, I think it's called. Okay. And we want these pictures all in black and white because it, it was an older house and we want to keep that feel of wow. 50 pictures. <gasps> oh my god! And that was just the That's cupola. And then they said, well, now what? we want some color ones for our living room and a couple of our guest bedrooms. And there went another 20 more. Oh my god. So you got 70 pictures in one person's house. One person's house. And then it was a Zanta. I don't know if you know what Zanta is. Zanta is an organization of women. And um, they have this uh, gallery of homes once a year. And that's how they raise money to help women entrepreneurs, etc. Okay. And it just happened that they had their house on a Santa tour. So they called us up and said, hey, we're going to be in the tour. You need to be here. So we were there with them and we, we handed out our cards and things. And, and so you make connections and make connections and, and make connections. connections. And that's, and even through charity work. Oh, that's like true. Like Ding Darling, when they hold their annual uh, event. They ask us for one or two pictures. Our next door neighbor says, I have one of your pictures. I bought it at the Ding event. I said, you're kidding me. Oh, she for like a silent auction? Yes. Oh, OK. And they took us into the house, and there it is, <laughs> proudly ah. displayed. And I said, oh, wow, that's so great. You know, And that's going to be one of our new neighbors. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so you never know. Wow, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. But you are gonna you you really want to start a brick and mortar gallery? Yes, yeah, and that's your dream. That is our dream, and that's how your company name came to be through mm -hmm. the lens through gallery. The lens gallery, yes. So you're like you're you got the name, you just need the gallery. <laughs> yes. But an online gallery is a gallery a is gallery. a gallery. Yes, so you exactly. have your pictures online, yes. and and the the website is through the lens dot com, right? Through the lens gallery dot com. Through the lens gallery dot com. Yes. Okay, I better make sure I get that right. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have, uh, you have businesses that display your work as well? Um, Sanibel Art and Frame displays our work in their gallery. And, it, just, and you just met them through going there for framing? They and um, actually, I'm trying to remember how we met them. No, we met them through somebody else again. Um, Oh, I know. Through um, there's a a painter in Sanibel, uh, Mira, and she does beautiful Sanibel paintings. And she was having a display there that day, and asked us to go by, you know, look at her work because uh -huh. she's friend of a friend of ours. And we got introduced to Paul, the owner of the frame, Sanibel Art and Frame. And then he says, uh, what are you doing? I said, well, we photograph. And he says, can I look at some of your photographs? I said, sure. And we showed him some. He goes, do you want to sell some of your photographs here? And, and does he take a small commission or, yes. or a big commission? Uh, I don't know. Big, big. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he pays the rent. So. Right, right. And they're on display there. Mm -hmm. And is that a sales technique that you use? Do you, have, do you do that on other places, or is that just something that just kind of just kind of happened just happened then ding darling says can we sell your postcards of your photographs i said sure you know and so that, same thing they take a cut yeah and you provide them so you have the upfront cost of getting everything done providing it for their store yeah and then and but they asked you yes. you didn't ask them no they asked us wow that's really yeah. really a big deal because most of the time, photographers are asking and asking and asking, you know, can I hang my work here? Can I do this? Mm -hmm. And people are just like inundated with photographers. Oh, I know. So That's the fact that they're the going. the Irish guy comes in, Yeah, I think. but Well, himself. you must be, I mean, obviously you're very good <laughs> and well liked. So. That's something too. And it sounds like you're pretty well known in Sanibel already. How long have you been there? Uh, our work has been displayed there for over eight years. Oh, so you've been yeah. there a little while now. Okay. We were at Ding Darling. 
we had a display in Ding Darling in Auditorium A for eight years. You had your work up there for eight years? Eight years. How did that happen? Through a mistake of theirs. Ah! <laughs> That Let's we hear had, about it. <laughs> we, had, we had been told that they had an exhibit, a one or two month exhibit at Ding Darling, and they rotate them, and okay. new artists every one or two months. And how did you find out about that? Just by going there, somebody okay. said, oh, you photograph, you know that they have an exhibit, and I said, oh, really? Oh, so, so local artists can hang their work there for two months or whatever? Yes. Okay. But you have to get on their list. And how do you get on their list? You talk to Jeff Combs. He's the guy in charge of it. So we talked to him. He put us on the list. So we wrote it down on our calendar. So we show up with our work like this, because this is how we like to display our work there. In these and when you, because this is phone. also a podcast, this is just dry mounted on black foam. On black foam. So the sides are black. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, and he goes, oh my God. I said, what happened? He goes, I made a mistake. I double booked. Oof. I said, oh. He goes, but you know what? I really like your work, so I want you to hang it anyways. We're going to hang it in Auditorium A. That's the auditorium where we show the film. So you're, you'll be probably more viewed than in the other auditorium, because uh, over there people have to walk in. Uh -huh. Here, people will walk in. Okay. He said, okay. So a month went by, two months went by, and we said, when should we pick up our work? And he goes, people really like it. Would you mind leaving it up? I ah. said, not <laughs> at all. And then a couple months later, he goes, would you happen to have any new ones? Maybe we can change some around. And oh I said, sure. Goodness. So then we started rotating pictures. Now, do they sell your work, though, or is it just on display? No, just on display. Okay. But we're allowed to have our little cards information, and information yeah. and things there. So, Do you get calls or not really? We've, we've gotten a couple of calls. Not too but many. Nothing, no, not no. too many. Yeah, yeah, because they're mostly probably tourists that aren't really... But, but they're the ones who have called. They've gotten back home and said, you know, we saw your work at Ding Darling and we really love those Roseates and we really would love a picture of it and how much and blah, blah. And wow. So, yeah. so you're very proactive, it sounds like, and that pays off. It does, it does. And it, it is slow, like you say, it's very slow. Um, the process is the slow. The process is slow. People getting to know you is slow. Um, we did approach um, Audubon and said, you know, we're available if you need somebody. And then they called us and said, yeah, would you like to exhibit your work and through do a presentation? I said, sure. So. Do they have a, an actual building in Sanibel? It happened in the, um, I forget what that's called, but they just redid that whole place. So they have they have a place, Yeah. even if it's rented, they have a place. They have a place, yeah. I don't know if they do here or not. Oh, that's a shame. They might. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a bird photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I keep, I, I took Joe's class like four or five years ago, I think. <laughs> And I'll take it again. He's going to offer the bird photography class in November, I think. And I'll, I'll probably take it again and try again. You I just don't have the patience, you know. <laughs> and I don't like to get up early. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I love but. the pictures. I look at this, you know, this picture you brought of the roseate spoonbill. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. I, w I would love to have something on my wall, wall like that. And uh, I'm probably going to have to buy it from you. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, we took his uh, brother and sister-in-law with us to Ding Darling one weekend. And we get out of the car, the Roseates were there, and we're setting up, and we start taking pictures. And she gets out of the car, takes, she goes, where are we going now? That and would be me. <laughs> okay, I I'm said, done. <laughs> no, we're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here. She goes, how many freaking pictures can you take of <laughs> <a> one bird? <laughs> I said, as many as we need to. <laughs> There's always a better one. <laughs> this know? is a good point. It's yeah. so funny because, I mean, if you think about how many photographers there are in the world and how many people take pictures of birds, but yet we don't get tired of it. No, not at all. And there's always something different, mm -hmm. you know? It's always. the behavior and all this other stuff. and. Now, do you, do you ever produce any coffee table books? Because it seems like you would. 
we have, that's another thing in our future, we hope, but what we have is um, there have been two books that have been published. One is Living Sanibel, and the other one is The Living Gulf Coast. And now, Charlie Subsack is the author of both. They're like field guides, and they give you information about the bird, okay. and, they, and all kinds of different things. In other words, the ecosystem in Sanibel or the ecosystem in the Gulf Coast. Oh, uh, okay. And Living Sanibel, there's like 101 of our pictures. In oh, my there. goodness. And on the Living Gulf Coast, um, the cover is one of my pictures. And then there's only about 89, I think, pictures in there. Only 89. <laughs> ah. <laughs> is there, does he have other photographers work in there too? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, what he did is he went around to different photographers depending on what his needs were. Ah. And he said, I'll come to you first, but if you don't have it, I'm moving on. I said, we understand. You got to yeah. have what you got to have, you know. Wow, that's so, awesome. So, And then um, Brian Johnson has um, Sanibel Scene. Okay. For Meyer scenes, Naples scenes. And is that a, a like a tourist publication? It's a tourist publication okay. that goes into all the hotel rooms. Oh, okay. And we are staff photographers for him. So he puts oh. our pictures in there. And if he needs something special, then he'll call us and say, hey, can you get pictures of this and that or the other? And then... Now tell the viewers how you get a gig like that. <laughs> now do you barter for ads? Because magazines don't pay anymore, do they? No. No, I have, I, it's been a long time since I've been paid for a job from the media. We get listed as his staff photographers. Uh huh. And he definitely makes sure that our name appears on every single picture that he does use that's ours. And he has this organization where they give um, discounts for different mm -hmm. restaurants and things. And it's something that you pay for. We don't pay for it. And we have. That's your living, yes, for the rest of our lives we'll have a card that oh, we can okay. use for that. It's for so. discounted services, so yeah. that's what you get in exchange. In okay. exchange, yeah. Yeah, because so. I know I, like, I'm the cover photographer for the local family magazine, and I exchange that for an ad. I work for the newspaper Florida Weekly. I exchange for ads, for you ads. know. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. so. But I know it's, to me, it's a, it's a really good idea because you get, it's always good for the media to know who you are. Who you are. Mm -hmm. Because in Florida Weekly, I've actually written some articles, you know, of my travels. I've traveled to Phil the Philippines. I wrote a big article about it. Traveled to Cuba, wrote an article about it. You know, so I had, and then there are certain been articles about me, but she wouldn't have even known who I was probably if I wasn't yeah. working there. Exactly. I mean, you know, I yes. freelance. I don't work there very often, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yes, that was the other thing on, on the first, oh, on every single first magazine of the different cities, he did have an article about us with our website and everything. So. I mean, that's, and then you can put that on your website and show, you know, mm -hmm. it shows you more credibility. You Absolutely. really are something. Now, it sounds to me like you guys kind of, you have a, do you have like a written business plan or do you, because you're like, that's on our list, that's on our list. You know, you are obviously have plans is we this, do. do you have a written business plan or is this just something that you and Dick have talked about? This is what we want to do, but it's not really in writing or like a formal plan. We started saying we're going to put a for formal plan together and then life got in the way kind of yeah. thing. So we decided that until the house is done and until we are at least semi retired from his other job, that we wouldn't have a, a an actual plan that we're going to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Right. So therefore, we're going to allow so many hours a day for this or whatever. But um, it just worked out. Fine. But you have an Thankfully, idea where you're yeah. going. It sounds yes. like. Yeah. I mean, you're going towards having a gallery, selling coffee table books, selling your fine art, all this other stuff like that. Um, now, do you print your own work? Yes. Do you really? Yes. Yes. Do you print the canvases too? Uh, yes, I do. Wow. We print canvas, we uh, print luster paper, which is what we prefer rather than high gloss paper, okay. uh, especially for the animals. It seems to work out better. Um, and um, 
it, the printing, I don't want to leave in the hands of somebody else. Yeah. Because I, I want it to be what I said it was going to be, not what somebody else takes my picture and then maybe looks too dark or too. In fact, I was a, you know, I judge at the Naples Art Association and there were like little spots on the bottom of somebody's picture. And I knew, I knew whose picture it was. This is one of the problems with being a judge in your local area because I, I recognize the tell. pictures, yeah. you know. Um, but I knew that they didn't do that. That was a printing error. Yeah. But they didn't catch it. Mm. But, you know, one of the other judges is like, look at this. This is shoddy work. And it wasn't, well, you know what I mean? Shame. Yeah. No, I don't print my own. I don't, but I'm just curious about it. So you bought one of those big printers, and how yes. much do they cost? A, a lot. Like five thousand dollars? Yes, uh, more. Forty-eight hundred. Forty-eight. Oh, 4, I was pretty close, yeah, wasn't I? Right <laughs> <in there. Yes. laughs> and where do you keep it? I mean, do you have a whole room in, in your office. house? Uh -huh. We have an office. Because they're big, aren't they? It's very big. And the supplies and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. Supply, <laughs> the inks. When we went to buy the inks, the inks was one fourth of what that printer cost. Oh, I know ink is so expensive. Oh my gosh! And yes. then of course you're going through it. Mm -hmm. Like crazy. Yeah. That's so. so interesting. Well, I hope that maybe Dick will come on the show later. I hope because so. I want to hear your progression into this retirement dream. Yes, you know, absolutely. I mean, to me, it sounds like you guys are living your dream, and it's so exciting. It I love watching exciting. people do stuff like this. <laughs> Thank you. So. Or maybe you'll come back. We'll see. <laughs> I'll be happy to. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on, and thank you for being the guest on the Understand Photography Show, episode number 44. Remember to check out the show notes on understandphotography.com. We usually have them on by Monday, Tuesday. Um, you'll see it says the Understand Photography Show, and you'll see this episode. Um, we'll have all the links that we talked about today, including about the beach cart. <laughs> as well as Sarah's contact information, which her website is throughthelensgallery.com. And this will be on YouTube and iTunes as a podcast, so please remember to leave us a review. We really, really need some more reviews, and I've, I've learned that people don't give you reviews unless you ask them usually. <laughs> so if you like the Understand Photography show, please leave us a review on either YouTube or iTunes. Next week on the Understand Photography Show, my guest is going to be wildlife and nature photographer Mary Getzinger. So don't miss it. Turn, tune in here if you want to watch it live on our Understand Photography Facebook page at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, every Friday to watch the interview live. And we will see you next week. I'm Peggy Farron signing off. Get up!